Guys, sometimes when you review a game, you may actually regret what you scored. I have reviewed games since, I, I want to say, 2016. One of the bigger mistakes a game reviewer can do is that they review a game when they are within the hype of the game. Coming straight from the game and you're feeling super hyped about the game and then you score it really high. Now today I am going to look back on all of my reviews and see if I still agree with myself. <laughs> Now the first game is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I feel like that is a at least an 8 out of 10. Um, I want to say 9 out of 10 actually. Okay, so I uploaded this in January 2018. What did I score it? I think it was 8.5. I'm so awkward in my older videos. Did I not score it? I don't know. I can't find the scoring on this. Oh, it's too hot in here. But I feel like it was an eight and a half out of ten. Maybe even nine. It was actually good. It was a good game. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, Molaka. I actually went back to Molaka not long ago because I made that underrated indie games video. What? It's just approved? <laughs> it's Isha Gaming approved, okay? Why am I not giving it a score? Anyways, I feel like it is a 7 out of 10 um, right now. Now, Morphite, I feel, is... Hey, um! I feel like Morphite is also a 7 out of 10. Really good, but it is on such a budget title. Uh, but I had fun with it. And this is actually filmed on the day that I made my logo, the Isha Gaming logo. So that is actually from 2018, June 2018. Jesus. Uh, I don't want to change it because I can't commit it to change. <laughs> and they were like dancing really ugly. <laughs> and they were like dancing really ugly. So now we have Harvest Moon Light of Hope. And I feel like this is a 5 out of 10 game. Verdict! I don't think I made scorings in my earlier reviews. Because this was the start of the Bionaut series. <laughs> so Skies of Fury I feel like is... Hey Coco. Easy mod. Look. Yeah. Uh, Skies of Fury I feel like is a 6 out of 10. Maybe 7 for me because I was obsessed. But I, I'm often obsessed. I don't think I scored my games at this time. It doesn't look like it. Thank you so much for watching! Yeah. Okay, cool. Titan Quest, I feel like that is an... Um, for me, again. These, these scores are for me. I feel like it is still an 8 out of 10 because I played it a ton. It's such a good ARPG. One of the funnest thing about the gameplay, in my opinion, I love to uh, cover the map as I go. Verdict! Uh, 8 out of 10. Atelier Lydia and Suel, I still feel like that is a 9 out of 10 for me. It is Isha Gaming approved. I just think I went with something like it is Isha Gaming approved back in these days. I mean, we are digging back in 2018 at this point. Yonder, I feel like is an 8 out of 10, at least, because it is fun. I gave it a 7. But today and right now, thinking back, looking back with my uh, feelings, I feel like it is an 8 now. But apparently back then I thought it was a 7. Okay, Little Dragon's Cafe. I am feeling a 6, actually, because the world was smaller than I would like it to be. I would have liked the world to be bigger. But the story was, the history was good, I mean. Is Isha Gaming approved? Again, Isha Gaming approved. Is that all I did back in the day? When did I start giving scores? And when did I quit? I gave a score on the last video. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. I consider that to be a 5 out of 10. Yeah, exactly, 5. I can still stand by that scoring. That is a good score. Uh, not really. Okay, so looking back with my feelings, <laughs> what? We're looking at Starlink Battle for Atlas. I feel like it is a 6 out of 10. And I gave it an 8. But I don't remember the game too much. These are several years ago that I played. I was impressed with it back then, but if I were to review it today, maybe 6. 
So that was a bit of a difference. Shining Resonance Refrain. I feel today that it is actually a 7, but I know that I scored it super high because this is what I mean. I reviewed it when I was in the hype, within the hype of the entire thing. And I know I scored this way high. I gave it a 9 out of 10. And I feel like today it is a 7.5. And, uh, so some things can actually change. Now, Victor Ran, I loved it. I think I gave it an 8, but today I would give it an 8, <laughs> I think. I gave it a 7 out of 10. Okay, but I feel like it's an 8 right now, so there you go. Something can definitely happen with your perspective on a game when some time has passed. Because then you're just left with your memories or potential nostalgia for the game, which is different from when you're actively playing it, I feel like. Okay, so Tales of Vesperia. Eight, maybe? I gave it eight and a half. <laughs> I still have things to do in that game, actually. Yes, definitely. Fairy Fencer F. Actually, for an ID Factory game, eight. I loved it. It's such a funny game. They're so funny in the game. I gave it a six? That is a game that has grown on me in the years that has been. Thinking back at it, it's like, I wanna go back because it was hilarious. I remember laughing out loud when playing this game. And I gave it a six, what? I would give it an eight today, easily, I guess. Okay, so here is also a review that I remember. And I remember I reviewed this within the hype. So I gave it a bigger score than I should have. But yeah, guilty at that. But my time at Porsche, I gave it a 10 out of 10, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I gave it a 10 out of 10. Oh no. The Switch version has too long of loading screens. It's sort of laggy, not the best version of the game. But I really enjoyed and I still do love what you do in the game, like the actual gameplay. But the performance was not very good on the Switch, so if I was like a more of a professional game reviewer, I would have taken away one point in the scoring, at least, for only the performance. That was so terrible. So a Switch version would actually be an 8 out of 10. Uh, and that is because the game is good, but the performance sucks. But I gave it a 10 out of 10, oh my god. Okay, Atelier Lulu, I loved it. 9 out of 10 is what I'm giving it today. And it's not long ago that I played it. L like, dipped back. I'm giving it an 8? Today I would actually give that a 9, because it was actually good and cute. Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> Such a good game. Nine and a half at least. And I am giving it an eight and a half out of ten. Fair enough, I guess. But I actually played it more after recording the review. Like I played it a ton, made the review and then played it more and then I, I don't know, liked it even more than at the point when I made the review. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so this is a game that looks like Graveyard Keeper. And I feel like this was such a gem. I recommend it to everyone. Not everyone, because it's sort of morbid. But I want to say 9 out of 10 because it's such a good thing for what it's trying to be. Taking everything into consideration. That it is an indie game and all of that stuff. I would say 9. But I gave it an 8. Fair enough. Uh, such a good game still. Okay, Bloodstained. Ritual of the Night. It was not my type of game. I would say 6 out of 10. I give it a Yeah, seven. Neighbor Stefan gives a 7 out of 10 and I'm giving 6.5 out of 10. Okay, Fire Emblem Three Houses, definitely an 8. Could be more, because Nintendo Solid. Okay, so I gave it a 9 out of 10. This is a quality title for the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> True that. Cool. Okay. Borderlands 3. This is my least viewed video on my entire channel, I think. Because <laughs> Switch channel all the way, then all of a sudden a review of a PlayStation game and nobody watched it. For what it is, 9 out of 10. Uh, yeah, for what I, st I can still stand by that. Because it is a looter shooter, and it is a 9 out of 10 looter shooter, if that makes sense. 
and uh, stranded sales I want to now like looking back I want to say six out of ten it was not very 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 good and I gave it a seven and a half I regret this score it's more like a five and a half six somewhere because it had this terrible stamina management your character was tired all the time Atelier Raisa it is like near perfect and definitely a nine out of ten but I gave it an eight I would say nine okay so Nino Kuni I would say ten out of ten and I maybe I did give it a ten out of ten let's see yes I gave it ten out of ten I agree with this score. It's a good score. It's a good game. The music was good. Okay, Fate Stella Link. Mm. I remember Happy Console Gamer was like, I'm gonna give that 5 out of 10 or something. But I think I gave it 7. And I feel like it is a 7 because it is a good game, but it's super niche. It's not the best game ever. Just a little fun. 7 out of 10. Fair enough. New Super Lucky's Tale, actually a really good 3D platformer. I wanna say seven and a half, eight maybe. And I gave it an eight. Good. Okay, the Dusk Trilogy. I wanna give it the entire trilogy, eight or nine, definitely. I had so much fun in these games. And I gave it a nine out of 10. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Call of Juarez. I want to say 10 out of 10. <laughs> I want to say that it is a perfect game. Like, legit perfect game. I loved it. I gave it a 9 out of 10, which is fair enough. Maybe it was a little short. Maybe that was it. But other than that, perfect freaking game. Loved it. Okay, Pokemon Sword and Shield. 7. It wasn't super good. Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> and I have that same freaking bad costume on as I did <laughs> as I did in Let's Go Review. Seven? Didn't I say seven? Why did I give it a nine out of ten? I was within the hype, definitely. Seven, maybe eight, okay. I remember the Pokemon were cute. <laughs> They're fun to collect and give weird names to. I always gave them weird names. Okay, Rune Factory 4. Back in the day on the 3DS it was a 10 out of 10, but uh, the Switch version is more like an 8. And that has nothing to do with the gameplay. It simply has to do with I didn't like what they did with the graphics. They actually looked better on the 3DS. Even though it is a remake, <laughs> I feel like it was a demake. So I gave it an 8. Fair enough. Oni Naki, I liked it so much. 8 out of 10, definitely. And I gave it an 8 out of 10. Good, good, good. See, I, I still agree with my past self. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a 10 out of 10. Freaking perfect game. Even though actually the crafting got jarring after a little, <laughs> little while. I've never used that word before, jarring. I heard it, so I wanted to use it. <laughs> okay, it was just boring after a while, the crafting animation. Verdict! What did I give it yo? Oh yeah, I remember I complained about the repetitive music for the first 20 hours of the game. <laughs> Anyways, I give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, okay, so Luigi's Mansion 3. 8. As a puzzle game, I give it 9 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, the puzzles, they were hard. The Rebel Collection, Black Flag and such. I didn't play uh, the other one very much, but Black Flag I played tons. For it's kind of aged by now, but for the time uh, it was an eight, and I gave it an eight. Okay, Story of Seasons: Friends of Mineral Town, good, but not as good as Pioneers of Olive Town, and I would say seven to this. Uh, in comparison, of course, to uh, Pioneers of Olive Town, but that game came later, so apparently I gave this game an 8. Xenoblade Definitive Edition. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. 10 out of 10, perfect game. I gave it a nine and a half. I think this was at the point where I, when I was like thinking to myself at least, I can't give every game 10 out of 10. I'm gonna, you know, try to be a bit more hardcore with my scoring. <laughs> I'm like, no, Jesus, give it whatever you want. That's what I'm thinking now. And I would actually just give it a 10 out of 10, Jesus. I mean, Astral Chain, 
9 out of 10, 9 and a half maybe even. Because super, super, super good. But I wish some of the areas were bigger and that they're, I don't know, were more uh, openness with the game. Because it's super chapter based, which is kind of putting it a tiny bit down, but it's so good. I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. I can stand by this score. It's actually a good score, uh, considering what I wanted to have changed. And I'm very much hoping for a sequel, Astral Chain 2. Okay, Immortals Phoenix Rising, <laughs> also very near perfect game. Had such a fun time in it. I gave it 9 out of 10, which seems fitting. Looking back now, I could I even push it further. I could push it to 9.5. I loved it. I did everything within the game. Now here is my favorite game. Almost favorite game ever, maybe. Next to freaking Skyrim and Genshin Impact, I guess, in World of Warcraft. Never mind. This is Dragon Quest Builders 2. And I want to say 10 out of 10. I think I actually gave it 10 out of 10. I think. Because good. Because for me, personally, it just really was that. Story of Seasons Friends of Olive Town, actually near a 10 out of 10 game, except for the NPCs in the game, they didn't have a brain. So I want to say 9 out of 10, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10, fair enough. Atelier Riser 2, I want to say, for me, it has definitely been a 10 out of 10, because I played it a ton, more than I should play it, even. I look so good in this review. <laughs> I can never recreate this. Makeup is the best makeup I've ever had. I'm looking back at this video and thinking god damn Okay, so 9 out of 10 very correct. Okay, so this is the last one of the video Which is Atelier Mysterious Trilogy review and comparison uh, 9 out of 10. I love the Atelier series. You know I do. Oh no 8 out of 10 hmm. Okay Anyways, all of these reviews are in the playlist called Buy or Not. You can actually find this playlist even when you are on your TV and such. And speaking of watching YouTube on your TV, that is what I do now. And you can also hit like while you are on your TV. <laughs> that was all my reviews ever done. I uh, reviewed my reviews, so to speak. And I hope you liked this video. Now, I will see you later. Bye.